Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Q&A sessions that we're doing in which you provide the questions to us and we do our best to provide the answers. As ever, a reminder that this channel is not monetized and we have no intention of monetizing it so that any support we get comes from you, the community. If you have a specific question that you want answered and maybe you don't want it aired publicly or if it's specifically you know, detailed, then by all means, you're welcome to join us on our Patreon Mondays on Patreon I don't know what I just said. Meetings. Join us at Patreon on Sundays. on Sundays for our meetings in which you can ask us the questions directly and we can answer you directly, real time, face to face. Having said all that, let's jump into it. Okay. What do you got? Welcome. This one, this first question comes from Mr. Clean is in. Not Mr. Proper. Mr. Clean. <laughs> In the in the edit, you ought to put up Mr. Meister proper so people know what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's a it's an inside joke in Germany. Okay, it says uh, elephant in the room is can one continue to get American Social Security payments in Germany? So if you're too old to work, Germany doesn't want you. Okay, that's um. Okay, Mr. Clean, let's, let's start with the first one. Uh, American Social Security payments, yes, you still get Social Security. If you earned it and you're yeah. entitled to it? Yeah, I mean, as long as you don't have warrants out or anything which would void Social Security payments. then Or non-payment of child support or something. Yeah, like that. there's a couple of different situations where you wouldn't, but uh, yes, you would. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the first part. The second part, so if you're too old to work, Germany doesn't want you. Um, well, if you're too old to work, you, you, yeah, Germany can't take you. Um, yeah, because I mean, the, the, realistically, it's going to sound horribly right. harsh, but you would simply be a drain on the medical system. Yeah, there, there's not enough housing to go around uh, for people to retire here. That's probably one of the reasons. Germany needs workers. Mm -hmm. They have a severe mm -hmm. labor shortage here, mm -hmm. and um, there's just not enough room for people to come here and just live. Um, unless you're a citizen, then obviously, yeah, you can be retired here. But as an immigrant, a lot of countries don't allow it. It's not just Germany. But all hope is not lost, right. as I've said in a couple of videos now. Denmark allows people to receive money from outside the country mm -hmm. and count toward residency. Yeah. So it's quite possible that Denmark might be an option for you. And it's something that, you know, he, uh, Justin and I are talking about during the week it's something we're talking about exploring so yeah tough time in germany tough time in a lot of countries that have older populations mm -hmm. but i don't think you're without hope no yeah there are places you can go for retirement and denmark's you know, a lovely country yeah so but just germany germany's not at least not now i mean who knows 20 years they might change that i, I don't know yeah but if he's drawing social security now 20 years from now won't help. yeah all i can say is right now no, sorry. Uh, Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver 64. I remember that game. That's an old PlayStation game back in the day. Yeah, Soul Reaver. Okay. Could you come over as a rich content creator slash YouTube streamer? Well, of course. How do you think we're here? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. All the Benjamins we bring in. <laughs> that you're holding... I'm sitting on a pile yeah. of them right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, they they do have uh, artist visas. Yes, and yeah, that's a, I wonder if that would count. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder. It's, I mean, it is content uh, creation. Yeah, at the end of the day, though, you're still going to have to be bringing in euros mm -hmm. in Germany, and you're going to have to prove that you're earning enough mm -hmm. uh. to support yourself. With a realistic expectation that you can uh, support yourself long term. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you, uh, if your money came in, if if you were like self employed, and you were getting paid in euros, like if you registered yourself in Germany as a business entity, and you were getting paid in euros, and paying yourself in euros, like with taxes and everything taken out, then probably. Yeah, why couldn't somebody open up a, uh, 
a business, let's mm-hmm. say, as a content creator, mm-hmm. and this, the uh, revenue stream is coming through, mm-hmm. I don't know, PayPal or Patreon or what, yeah. what have you. It's the same thing as opening a business here, isn't it? I mean, yeah. If your if your business is bringing in the money, and then you're paying yourself in euros, like as long as you're paying taxes to the German government, mm-hmm. I mean that's and, it, and it's I think possible. You, you'd either pull it off under an entrepreneurial yeah, visa, exactly, or possibly an artist visa, or combine the two. Mm-hmm. And if you, especially if you had, or if if you did specifically stuff in Germany. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as content creation, you know, and, and there are people here who do that. We're getting paid. Yeah. Uh, if you are a good, if you're rich and you're a content creator or a YouTube streamer, then you kind of have an idea of what you're doing. You could even work for somebody. You could work for a company, uh, you know, if you have those skills. If, and if you had a, mm-hmm. an actual, uh, viewership already established, mm-hmm. but if you were to come over here and start a YouTube channel, yeah. I don't know. I don't think there's any chance of that. Right. Especially since small YouTube channels, they, they don't make money at all. Uh, you have to have millions of views Correct. and thousands and thousands of subscribers. Like Ruby Frankie. It. <laughs> yeah. Random name. Yeah, so if, if, you're, if you're not at that level, then you're probably not going to make money. But hey, if, if you're a rich content creator, YouTube streamer, you could try. It's worth a shot. You, you might have to talk to a lawyer, um, an immigration attorney as far as you know, whether that would work and how they could get it to work. And if, if, if that's a path you'd like to take, then reach out to us and we can provide you with mm-hmm. the name of the attorney. But that's a very interesting question. So we no one, no one's asked mm. anything like that before. First time. Okay. Yeah. That was the first one. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Okay. This one comes from uh, JB with a bunch of stuff after they end the name. If I move to Germany, do I have to move my investments to a German brokerage uh, or do I keep money in the States? I feel like they might try to freeze my assets in the U.S. if I leave. Well, then you answered your own question. Well, <laughs> if they're going to freeze your assets, then it's because you owe the government money or something. I mean, they don't really take your stuff unless you've committed a crime. But no, if you move over here, um, you don't have to move your investments. You can leave them in your brokerage account in the U.S. Like, yeah, we didn't move anything. No, like Schwab no. or Fidelity or any any of those big brokerage firms. You you can leave your money in your stocks and securities. I do. No. All all my stocks and bonds and ETFs and everything are all still in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, you still have access to everything online through your broker's website. You can still make trades. Uh, you know, you can keep your checking account. You can move money over here. If you want to, um, but you know you could put it in your savings account, checking account. Mm-hmm. As far as um, trading in Europe, you can trade on the European stock exchange if you want, uh, but no, it's not really a money maker. And if you were to trade on the European stock exchange through your U.S. brokers, you do have to pay the foreign transaction fees, and that's a real pain. So you're better off just just keep all your money there. Come over here, make money, mm-hmm. and then have money here. They're not going to freeze your assets uh, unless you're running from the law and they're mm-hmm. trying to prevent you from having any money. Correct. Yeah, they're – In which case, your passport is flagged also. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, even if you – I don't even if you left without notice, don't do that. But, like, even if you left with, and, and you had a warrant for failing to register or something like that, they're still not going to freeze your assets. They're going to flag your passport, and they're going to come find you. But they're not. They're, they're probably not going to. First of all, they assets. they would have to know about your assets. Yeah, you know what I mean. And they have to get court orders. But that's a good point. I've had a warrant stuff. out for six years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody froze my any of my. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're not coming money. after you. I mean, like if you owe the government money, if you, if you didn't pay your taxes, yeah, they will take every penny you have. They will search the ends of the earth. Yeah, they want their money for every account, uh, every asset you you have. And they will they will try to take it, but no, just coming over here now. You're totally fine. Hope that answers your question, JB. Okay, this next one comes from Mike Jennings. I believe he has asked questions before. The name sounds familiar. How do you find employers to set up interviews with before you come to visit Germany? Okay. Um. Same way you do in the U.S. 
Yeah, there's there's plenty of online job seeker mm-hmm. websites. Just literally pick one. There are hundreds, if not thousands. Yeah, I mean, you always got like the LinkedIn's and things like Correct. that. There's Correct. all German versions of those. Um, and even if there's a particular company mm-hmm. you want to work for, a particular field, you can always contact them directly. And they have usually they have links right on their web pages yeah. for yep. applying for positions. Yeah, all the big companies like mm-hmm. Mercedes, uh, Porsche. Bosch, Stuttgart, Stuttgart, Stuttgart. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, uh, <laughs> those, they're, all, they're all here. But uh, yeah, all the big German companies. You can go to their website and look at careers, mm-hmm. including Amazon. Yeah. Oh, Amazon. Um, yeah, you can always do that. Amazon. Yeah, there, man. There's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also when you, when you come here, you can apply in person. You know, you can go into these shops if you want to work at a small business or something and mm-hmm. ask for an application. Um, Realistically, though, an employer is not going to set up an interview with you living in another country. Correct. Uh, especially if you don't speak German or they weren't recruiting you, like reaching out to find you. Okay. Mm-hmm. If a headhunter contacted you, then yes. But most German companies aren't going to just go looking there. You know, they want you to come here first. Correct. So it's, it's a waste of their time mm-hmm. to interview and go through the whole process. Cause I mean, they have to pay people to do that in the hope that you get a visa to come over here. Yeah. That's right. a gamble because they don't know if you have the money to come over here. They don't know if you have the real intention to come over here. And most companies aren't taking that risk. Not when there's mm-hmm. so many people already here in Germany trying to get that job. Uh, there's, there's, there's more questions here. Oh, so okay. that's, that's okay. But that was that answer in the first part. The first okay. question. Uh, the second question is if you receive an offer letter, um, I understand there's an unspecified amount of time it takes to get the approval. I'm assuming for the residence permit approval for the permit. Uh, do they keep the job open for you while you wait? It's going to completely depend on the job and the company. Yeah. Like um, if they need a doctorate, if you yeah. need a doctorate of physics to get a particular job, yeah, they'll probably hold the job for you. Yeah. But if it's, you know, packing boxes if it's in an, an easily Amazon replaceable warehouse, job, I doubt it seriously. No, those are the jobs you come here and you do it quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, it does depend on where you live as to how yes. long the processing takes. Yes. It could be a couple weeks to a couple, several months. Up to a year. Uh, yeah. We've seen it. Yeah, it's it's the rare occasion. It, yeah, it is. It. it is. But yeah, it could take a while. And, and some of those jobs, yeah, what the what the Auslander Bahura will do, they'll say, well, this job offer is too old. Go get a new one. And then the company will just give you a new paper, you know. And then they'll finish processing it and mm. whatever. And you know. speaking as an employer myself, I've also had the Auslander Bahura. We keep using that word. I mm-hmm. wanted to say the second ago. You used the word. Mm. The Auslander Bahura is the immigration authority or mm-hmm. the immigration office. Um, I have had the Ausländer Behörde contact me to ask me if contracts were still open mm-hmm. for certain employees. So sometimes they will contact mm-hmm. the employer directly. Yeah. I, in yeah. fact, I'm almost going to say that's kind of common at this point. I yeah, I mean, I've, if it's been a while, they probably want to make sure that the job's still open. Yeah, I mean, I've had that happen a couple times at work recently where they sent letters to me to check. Right. All right, whatever. And the third part of the question is, if you are waiting... Can you go back to the USA while you were wait, waiting on your approval? Uh, I actually don't know the answer. No. To that. The answer is no. no. Yeah, you okay. cannot. While you have a fiction's uh after you have overstayed your visa free period of 90 oh, days. Oh, that's why. Yeah, okay, okay. Your fiction's Bescheinigung specifically says you cannot leave Germany. Like you can't go traveling around Europe and Schengen. No, you can't because that's a national paper just for Germany. Yeah, but it would violate if, if you're over your six month. Yeah, and if you tried to leave the Schengen, uh, they could get you for overstaying, and they won't let you back in with that paper. And then they'll ban you for like three years. Yeah, or they something. could. They could if they wanted to be dicks. I mean, they 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 could really come down on you. But so the answer is no. You have to wait. They want you to stay here and wait and support yourself. Pending the process. Yeah, pending the outcome of the um, okay. Alpha House title. So. Uh, he asks because you have to make arrangements for the house to be sold. Yeah, that is typical uh, for a lot of folks. It is difficult, you know, when you have a lot when you have a lot of roots in the U.S. Yep. to just kind of rip them up and come over. You can leave the house in the care of a good friend or a caretaker. 
and or a um, realtor who will rent it out. Yeah, and just hang income. on to it just in case because what if you come here for six months and they deny you anyway and you have to go back? You'll need a place to live. So if you really want to gamble it, you can you can you can sell it um, and keep, bring the money. And then if ever, if if it doesn't go well, go home and you have money for an apartment. Um, but it is a gamble. I mean, it's it's not easy. We we might make it sound or look somewhat easy to do, but it, I know for some folks that's it's a big step, and we understand that. Um, and that's why we don't want to give anybody a false impression that you know it's a hundred percent guaranteed, and things are just gonna be peaches and cream, because sometimes it might not be, you know. But always have a plan. Yeah, B. yeah there there is the exception, and that's mm-hmm. what our attorney is always saying to yeah. every person related to what we're doing who's who's been uh, interviewed by him he always tells them have a plan b yeah have a plan mm-hmm. b just like the boy scouts taught you be prepared i wasn't a boy scout is not a boy scout my church didn't allow it oh uh, whatever uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm just saying all right we got time for one more this one comes from a user what is minimum wage in Germany? Well, it's 2024. Just went up in January. Uh, it is now. I believe it's 1241. 1241. Per except hour. that, yeah, because our company pays more than minimum wage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of companies so, pay more than minimum wage uh, just so they can recruit more yeah. people. So 1241 is the minimum wage. But right yeah, the, the minimum wage yeah, after taxes. I it's think the minimum it's, wage regardless of whether it's before. No, or no, no. I was just trying to think of like the monthly, the monthly wage. Like the gross monthly wage minimum is like twenty forty or something, like two thousand forty euros a month or whatever. But before the, taxes. Yeah, before ta- the gross. Yeah. The, uh in Luxembourg it's like twenty seven hundred. Yeah. Yeah, but can you imagine what their taxes are like? I can oh I can't but, speak Luxembourg. Let's be quick to point out that Unless you're li- really living extravagantly, yeah. you can support yourself on that. Yes, uh, yeah. Don't be fooled. Twelve forty is not twelve dollars and forty cents an hour oh, in that's America. True. Yeah, 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 yeah. Twelve yeah. euros is a, is worth is worth more. It's closer to fourteen dollars right. per hour. Um, and the cost of living is not and the cost as high of living is, is much lower here in, yeah. in some places yeah. uh, than in a lot of places in the U.S. Correct. So you can have an apartment. You can have internet. And you can have a cell phone. Do. Yeah, you can have a computer. You can have nice things. Food. You can have food too. Uh, and it's <laughs> a nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're you're fine. I mean, you're not going to be yeah. rich. You're not going to have tons of material. Oh, but crap. it's a start. But yeah, you can you can definitely start. Yeah. In the U.S., you can't start no. at on seven twenty five or whatever the hell it is an hour. No, you you can't. You got to work two full time jobs oh, just to eat. No. So. Yeah, no, it's a minimum wage here. It's a livable wage. They make sure that you can live off of it. Well, that was the whole point of doing mm-hmm. the minimum wage. Yeah, originally in the U.S., that was the point too. <laughs> <laughs> it was so that way no one would starve. If you worked, you made a minimum wage, you were fine. Oh, no. no. So that brings us to the close of this video, unless I'm mistaken. We're yeah, no, on, that's it. That's going to be it for one. this week. Guys. So thank you so much for mm-hmm. joining us. Yes, thank you. It's been as much a pleasure for us to make these as I hope you guys are in enjoying them mm-hmm. so just a quick reminder if you want to speak to us directly the best way to do that is on patreon mm-hmm. and you're welcome to join us on the sunday meetings please until then you know that i believe that if you're not happy with your situation you should do something about it and reaching out to us with questions is a way to do something about it and it's mm-hmm. certainly a good first step Definitely. Till next time my friends be smart and be safe Cheers. ciao